This is Michael Orl of MobileBaron.com. We're going to take a look at some of the other features in the Samsung Behold 2 for T-Mobile. Uh, now, I've previously shown you uh, very briefly the 3D Cube menu here, but I'm going to show you some other things you can do. Uh, don't necessarily make a lot of sense, but you can shake the phone around to get the cube to spin. Uh, it serves no practical purpose. Uh, you can touch down the bottom here to skip the cube altogether and go right to the shortcuts. Um, but just for purposes of showing you what's going on, we'll try to navigate the normal way. This is the photo side of the cube. If you tap on it once, it brings up a um, stack of cards, I guess you could call it, of photos. Unfortunately, the, it's generally pretty slow, and you can see we're looking at a bunch of black images here. And unless you wait quite a while, it doesn't catch up. Um, it's really not all that useful. And go back to the cube, and you can see there's YouTube videos as well. It does the same thing with some of the uh, popular videos that are on YouTube at the moment, but again, uh, takes quite some time to load up. The bookmark system seemed like it might have been a cool application, but when I tap on it, I only ever get the most recent bookmark I've created. Uh, there's no deck of them even though I've added a few bookmarks so I get access to one bookmark here. Um, so I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is. We'll go back to the cube again quickly and access the music side. There's only two tracks on here. I haven't bothered to load any different ones but you can see it's showing them right there also want to point out some of the issues with the TouchWiz 2.0 uh, home screen. First off, you can see the widgets can overlap each other. Um, not a horrible problem since you can move them to where you want. Uh, maybe it gives you a little bit of flexibility. But notice where the camera widget is right now. now I'm going to activate it by tapping on it. And then say we go through and went through and hit the photos or something and we're done, the widget is moved. I have no control over that. Um, it's always going to move back to some location that it thinks is better. Uh, it's just like with the other TouchWiz 2.0 and uh, prior TouchWiz devices from Samsung. It's a, it's a real pain and it you know, makes it impossible to keep things organized. Also, since there's no Snap2 grid, you'll notice it's very hard to get the icons to line up. Um, the, the bottom row is easy because it snaps to as far to the bottom as it can go, but the rest of them, it's very hard to line up. And which, again, not necessarily a huge deal, but um, does make it look messy. And I've also experienced uh, quite a number of times when I'm trying to swipe back and forth, I've actually grabbed the widget tray instead, which um, again, just a bad idea to move it over to the side. It was fine where it was at the bottom where it stayed out of the way. There are some cool widgets though. Um, I really like the Wi-Fi widget and the similar Bluetooth widget. It shows your relative strength and um, which one you're connected to and things like that, which is really kind of cool. And of course there's always a, a list view as well. You can go back and forth. I've got the email client loaded up. Uh, this is actually an exchange account. And take a look at the messaging. Uh, it looks quite nice. Everything works pretty well. Uh, navigate through folders. Folders are not updated in real time, though. You kind of have to go in there and um, you know, hit refresh. Uh, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem even the inbox doesn't seem to stay up to date. Uh, I manually had to hit refresh here just to see the current list of messages. So uh, even though it claims to be push email support, uh, hasn't worked very well for me so far. One of the things I do really like on the phone, though, is the profile system. Unlike most Android devices, you have real honest-to-goodness profile support here. And you can edit them, and you can change you know, different ringtones. For example, I'll put Heather Rose on this one here and save it. And then if I go to the normal profile, you can see we've got the T-Mobile jingle. So you can, it's nice that you can set different ringtones for different profiles. I want to show you the major problem I've come across with text input on the device. Uh, right now we're just entering in a new email account. Now, 
notice the keyboard's in lowercase mode. You know, it's like uh, G, H, J, you know, everything coming across. And as soon as I hit I, there's an uppercase I. Everything else is lowercase. The I's are always uppercase. Uh, same thing when you're entering in URLs. Uh, all over the system this is happening. Obviously, this is a major problem and they're going to have to fix it. But if you have a case sensitive password, has a lowercase I in it, you're out of luck. It also happens when you're in landscape mode. You can see all the I's coming across as uppercase I's. And even in the 20 key and 12 key uh, virtual keyboard layouts, it does the same thing. So it's, it's a real problem. Here's a different keyboard layout just to demonstrate that it still has the same problem. I'm going to go back to the imaging widget here just to get to quick access to the photos. Now this app was preloaded uh, earlier, so all the thumbnails were generated. Otherwise it takes quite a while to load the thumbnails. Tap on one of the photos there. You can see it's a nice brightly colored photo. Really been quite pleased with the camera. I'm going to show you the uh, zooming control that was borrowed from the uh, Dolphin browser, such as uh, one seen on the Samsung Jet. You just long press, and then the arrows come up and show you that you can zoom up or down. It's not a bad system at all. I mean, it's not as good as uh, you know uh, maybe a multi-touch gesture or something like that, but um, it still works pretty well. And of course, you have double tap zooming in and out. but the gallery is pretty slow in general. It does take nice photos, this camera. And you can navigate through, and of course there's list views as well. You also notice in the imaging widget that there's uh, direct links to a bunch of different things. Some of the online albums, slideshows, uh, Flickr. There's good support for uh, photo sharing. Um, you can see Kodak, uh, Photobucket, and Flickr are supported right out of the box. I want to show you one of the bugs I've found that's inside the dialer application. I mean, the dialer itself works fine, but there's an abbreviated uh, contacts list inside the dialer. And whenever we try to pull up this particular contact, I'm not sure what's wrong with it, it causes the application to crash. This is the main contacts application. You can see we just grab the little slider on the right-hand side to jump around. And as I mentioned, though, there's no uh, searching on last name, only on first name, which is a bit of a problem. I do like the quick access to messaging and calling just from hitting the button, so, but it really does eat up a lot of screen real estate. The uh, Android 2.0 system where you tap on the photo um, for the contact, I think, is a much better system. Got the widget tray, also known as the main menu pull-up, just so you can see some of the other things that are here. You know, we have the dedicated... YouTube client, of course, um, voice search, the voice dialer, and Telenav's GPS system is preloaded. Number of uh, Samsung utilities, the converters, stopwatch, things like that. Quick access to my account on T-Mobile, uh, memo as well. Some of these things are accessible from the home screen uh, just by going to the quick list. But as I mentioned before, you can't reconfigure this menu at all, so it's um, pretty much they decide what goes on here. You know, we do have uh, visual voicemail support, and of course there is instant messaging and things like that as well. And while I'm here, might as well pull up the media player. Play one of the two tracks that comes preloaded on the device. You see album art. A swipe left or swipe right goes back to the library. When you hold the device horizontally, it goes into a cover flow like you, which is kind of cool. Overall, I think it's probably the nicest media player I've seen on a Samsung phone. And it's definitely nicer and um, cooler looking than the default Android music player. Amazon's MP3 store is also supported though if you want to go and buy new tracks. Lastly, I wanted to go back to the wallpaper setting, and it turns out it does actually work. 
it's just really, really slow. Um, so it is finger-based scrolling down at the bottom. Now you can see it working. I gave it enough time. It's really jittery, um, just doesn't work all that well. But it's better than we thought when we first came across it. And you can see it's still really slow setting that. But now we've gotten the image we wanted. So that's my quick look at the Samsung Behold 2 for T-Mobile USA. Uh, I really dislike the TouchWiz 2.0 home screen system, the widgets, the main menu widget tray, and all the confusion that um, this adds to the system. But otherwise, I think a lot of the things that Samsung have done, like the, the new notifications area, and even some of the new apps, um, you know, calendar, contacts, and things like that, they, they've done something different, and I think that's okay. Uh, most of them work pretty well. Uh, and of course the OLED display on this thing is absolutely brilliant. You can just see how the colors jump out here. So um, it's not the best Android phone on, on the market. I, I definitely think a Droid, a uh, Click, or uh, HTC Hero derived device is, is going to be better, but it's definitely a solid and um, fun to use device. So that's the Samsung Behold 2 for T-Mobile USA. I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.